Hi everyone and welcome back to The Rocketeer. Today I'm going to offer some advice on purchasing a kit for level 1 certification. I've had a number of viewers come to me and ask for recommendations, so today I'm going to offer some advice to help you make that choice. Also we're going to take a look at a couple of other things like craft paper versus fiberglass, glue versus epoxy, nylon versus Kevlar, shoot release versus dual deploy, and should I purchase one kit for level 1 and level 2? We're going to talk about that and much more. Stay tuned, listen quick, here we go. I'd like to take just a minute and thank those who have bought me a coffee. There's a link below if you'd like to support the channel. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Should you purchase one rocket that will cover level 1 and level 2 at the same time? In my opinion, that's not the best way to go. You could do that, and some people have done that. But I prefer a 4 inch paper, craft paper rocket for your L1 attempt. That way when you put an H motor in it, it won't go out of sight. There's a saying amongst uh, experienced rocketeers that goes like this, low and slow. In other words, you want to be able to watch the rocket in flight and check it out at Apogee. Make sure that the laundry comes out the way it should, that the parachute doesn't tangle, that your ejection charge is about right, and that your delay is within margin. And you can't do that if you send a rocket out of sight. Now on a level two, I suggest a fiberglass rocket, but that's a video for another day. So for a level one attempt, I, in my opinion, a four inch craft paper rocket is the way to go. There is one example I'd like to share with you. At one of our launches, we had a team come from out of state, bring their kit, their built rocket for a level one attempt. And they decided to fly on an I motor. And we advised them not to do that, that they might want to choose an H motor, that it would go out of sight or go really high and they may have difficulties recovering it. And to that, they responded with, hey, cool. So they were okay with that. Uh, they, they were allowed to launch the rocket and it went like a bullet and we did not see the Apogee event because it was out of sight. We did see it floating way down the field and it disappeared uh, probably a half a mile or more away into a bean field. So just uh, as an example, don't let that be you. Um, you want to be able to recover your rocket because you can't certify without recovering the, the rocket. And it has to be in a flyable condition. So just take note, go low and slow, stick with an H, and you'll be good. Should you upgrade your kit from the standard nylon like this that comes with it? If it's a nice heavy one like this, I, yeah, I wouldn't bother doing it. It is up to the flyer. Or the builder but I really do like these quarter inch tubular uh, Kevlar cords that I got from Lock Precision. I use all of these in my level 2 flights. Uh, it's just they hold up really well. They really take the heat very well. Usually the nylon is fine for uh, just a standard kit. Now you can add to the uh, length of it if you like to. Uh, some of them are only 15 feet long. I like to see them 25 feet long. You could add another 10 feet. Or you could add 15 feet of just Kevlar and then take your standard shot cord and attach it to that. I find that these uh, nylon cords, they, they tend to get brittle and they, they can burn and crack and they can fail at some point. But that usually takes quite a few flights and maybe several years. Usually by then, mine are hanging in a tree or lost. So <laughs> I just count that as consumables. But anyways, it's up to you. Those are your options. You'll have to make the decision. Should you use regular carpenter's glue, yellow glue, or always use epoxy for your high power kit builds? Well, for me, I choose epoxy because it sets very quickly. You can choose a set time from 15 to 30 minutes or even five minutes, which is a little short, but you can choose a set time and you don't have to wait for the glue to dry. Uh, you probably could use carpenter's or yellow glue. If you have used that for a high power build and that's worked well for you, or if it has not worked well for you, please write down in the description and let me know how that worked out. But anyways, also epoxy, it's, uh, it can be thick like uh, rock epoxy, which is what I prefer to use for the fins, and it gives a much smoother, um, uh, wider fillet. So you get a little more support from that. It doesn't take multiple applications. It's one and done, and it sets up fairly quick. So that's my choice. Uh, nothing will start a war on a forum like, what's your favorite glue? So everybody has an opinion on this. It's whatever you choose. But for me, I'm going to stick with the epoxy. And for our last tip, shoot release or dual deploy. 
For a level one rocket, I like to use a chute release like this. It's by Jolly Logic. Uh, quick tip here, replace the rubber band with a hair tie. They hold up a lot better. Multiple uses, they don't dry out and break. And uh, yeah, I've had this one on here for a couple of years. I would show you a close up of this, but it's a little scorched, but you get the idea anyways. I'll put a link in the description so you can see it. So the choice is a chute release or dual deploy. I prefer the chute release for the level one rocket. Uh, you wanna build on your experience with uh, each launch and it's just a simple way to get started and it's reliable. Uh, dual deploy requires a little more planning and testing and black powder, which is difficult to get at this point in 2021. But anyways, yeah, I, I recommend the uh, chute release and then for a level two kit, a dual deploy, but you'll need something like that to recover the rocket because if it goes up, say 12, 1500 feet, you don't want it to drift out of your launch area and then you won't certify on your rocket. So that's a good place to start. I hope you found today's tips helpful. In an upcoming video, I'm going to build this four inch Patriot that would be a really good uh, suitable rocket for a level one attempt. As usual, I'll go through the tips and building uh, techniques that I use to build my rocket. And uh, hopefully there's lots of stuff to help you out there. Now, there are many kits that are suitable for a level one attempt. A number of people in our club have used the Apogee Zephyr. That's a really nice kit. Uh, but there are kits by Lock Precision and many other makers that are suitable for this. So just do your research. Uh, start with a four inch kit. I'll see you soon in the next build video and we'll fly the rocket in the spring. Until then, like, subscribe. I'll see you soon.